Hey, it's Rob from PalmWebOS.org. I'm here with the Palm Pre. I'm going to do a quick hardware review. So we've heard two main things when talking about the hardware of the Pre, and that is, first of all, it feels really good in your hand, and I completely concur with that. Um, it's got a nice, a real nice shape, a real nice size, the way it fits in your hand. Much smaller than most of the high-end smartphones out there, at least the ones that are popular, like the iPhone, the G1, the Storm. Um, it's just more compact and just feels good. Um, it also has that curved, pebble-like appearance, and it just looks absolutely great. So all around, the design style for the Palm Pre is great. It's fantastic. Um, the main negative we're hearing is, well, I guess two main negatives. The first being, um, the first being that it's a little bit plasticky, and I agree with that as well. I can I'll explain a little more about that later. And the other one is about the keyboard and the keyboard being tight. So let's just go through some of the main actual hardware specs and features. So you've got the screen which is 320 by 480 uh, pixel resolution. It's great, really nice looking screen. Um, below the screen, right here, you have the gesture area. And this is how you get around um, manipulating and calling different things to the pre, along with this button here, which calls up the card view. Um, down below that in the bottom left you'll see that little that's the speaker for when you're talking um, at the top obviously you've got the earpiece up here um, on the top you have the 3.5 millimeter headset jack which is great for multimedia multimedia and music lovers um, a lot of phones are missing that it's wonderful that's on the pre so basically you can use this like an iPod and like a device and the fact that it syncs with iTunes makes it even that much more useful so that's a great feature there right next to here this is the ringer on off um, button this is the power button so you hold that turn it on and off you can also just uh, tap it to wake it up and tap it to put it back to sleep and dim the screen um, here you've got the uh, the charge door so if you open this up whoops this is how you charge it and this is kinda of where the plastic part comes in um, the guy from Engadget who reviewed this he broke off this piece when he first reviewed it um, I'm not sure if he tried to pull the bottom part up instead of the top part down or what but because it has that plasticky feel it, it, it feels much more rigid like it's capable of breaking so you have to be much more delicate with this phone than some others um, and you know they could have made this rubber piece but they obviously wanted to keep that in line with um, with the rest of the design so <clears throat> that's one thing the other thing on this side is the volume button my volume button actually fell out and broke and you can see here it's very wiggly now um, you can see it's like coming out it actually already fell out once um, I went to the store they're going to give me a replacement unit I'm not sure what the problem was but this is just something else with the with the plasticky feel and it is a little bit of a drawback but it's not the worst thing in the world the volume button still work fine for me I did pay like what five hundred dollars when I went into the store so it stinks to come back with a device that um, is a little bit finicky but um, those these contribute to this plasticky feel we've also got the battery door. Um, if you look closely, well, you press this in, and you. Oops, try hard to do this through the camera. You see how the battery door is coming off? Well, I feel like a lot of people are going to get into a problem because if you take this and turn it around, this part's the battery, but to the left, this is the actual phone. So I feel like people are going to try and rip off the battery, and they're actually pu will be pulling the phone apart. I caught myself doing that, but when you're taking the battery off, you can see there's, it does look like it's, it can come apart a little bit, and so I wonder about the longevity of these phones, and um, if they'll go through wear and tear very well. I guess time would tell that, but I mean, for the most part, it seems, seems pretty solid. Um, you just got to be delicate with, the, with these different external pieces. Um, what else do we have? We have... So that's the volume up and down. On the back, we've got the speaker. The speaker wasn't as loud as I like, but most phones don't have a very loud speaker. Um, and this looks like it'd be really loud because it's so it's so big and and a focal point of the back. But it isn't that loud. I'm wondering why no one has a front 
uh, speaker phone since usually that's how you'd be holding it. It would be coming. I don't know, but I would like to see that on a phone. But the speakers here is decent, nothing exceptional. And then you've got the three megapixel camera here. Um, takes good pictures. It's the the best part about it for me is that it has this LED flash. So those are two real big perks for me: the 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and then the uh, and then the LED flash. Because if you have a phone that doesn't have a flash, it basically renders it useless at nighttime or when it's dark. So I love the fact that they include the flash. Those are two real two really nice tidbits um, that make the pre better than than some other phones out there. Um, the other thing is there is no, you know, design decisions are trade-offs. So there is no external uh, memory storage. So you there is no SD card that you can add onto this. It's eight gigabytes, and that's all you have. You can't add any more. Um, and they set Palm actually uh, execs addressed this and said basically their number one priority was design. Um, and the way the phone feels and they get an A++ for that so their number one priority was achieved uh, and and this you know the storage came uh, came up a little short because of that but you have to make decisions you can't have a billion gigabytes and the smallest phone in the world and every single thing you've got to make decisions so um, they made a good decision because the phone is a great phone um, I love it so far and uh, the hardware is is pretty good. It does have its you know setbacks, but um, the other thing is the keyboard. This is a pretty main thing. Uh, the keyboard. I was a little bit nervous when I opened it and started typing. The keys seem small. They seem small even when you're typing. But I didn't. I hardly made any errors. So it it seemed to work just fine. I definitely typed faster on other keyboards. The G1 keyboard was faster. Uh, I compare most keyboards to the Verizon Voyager which I think has the best keyboard out there I guess which is now the LG uh, NV Touch which I have not had a chance to to play with but you'll see this orange key here uh, if you press that you can use these numbers um, and all the different symbols on top of the of the letters. You've got a big space which is probably about three keys wide um, you've got the dedicated the period sign and the at sign, both helpful. Interesting, nobody's really pointed out that the delete key and the enter key are right next to each other. I remember that being a really big deal when the uh, the T-Mobile G1 came out. People were saying, oh, I'm trying to delete something that I am text messaging to someone and instead I hit send on accident. So I haven't really heard that complaint yet, but I'm sure we'll hear that as we get some... Uh, some <laughs> vulgar text messages sent to somebody on accident or I don't know we'll see but um, and it would it would make it even more you know likely to happen that the fact that the keyboard is kinda small so the keyboard does work it's good I wonder if there's gonna be an there's no on-screen keyboard kinda like the G1 how you um, whenever you wanna type you have to open it up there is no input on the keyboard on the you know the software keyboard but that's something that they could add in the future and just an over-the-air update. Excuse me. So I think that concludes our hardware overview. Um, I would, I don't, I'd probably give the the pre a, a B plus or a minus. Um, the with the negatives being some of this plasticky stuff going on. The keyboard isn't exceptional, and then you have the SD card issue. But it gets major bonus points for the camera, the flash. The 3.5 megapixel, or the excuse me, 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and of course just the overall design. I think a a minus um, for sure. So one of the sexier devices you're going to see this year, and um, hopefully Palm takes all this into consideration when they make their next phone. So excellent job, and I'm really looking forward to carrying this thing around with me and showing it off and using it. So. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned for more uh, video reviews. We'll have a lot today. So, Rob from palmwebos.org. Talk to you soon.